Hi, everyone. Um, well, first of all, thank you for listening to that video. And um, yeah, this is um, a video about something that is interesting to me recently that I thought of. And yeah, clearly it's not scripted. Um, I just had this in mind and wanted to share it with you and perhaps you have a different opinion or you disagree with me or you agree but not on everything and that's fine I'm more than happy to receive counter arguments or just different thoughts on the subjects and so don't like, don't be afraid of leaving a comment and tell me what you think. So, yeah, uh, recently I got this feeling that I became somehow tired of service design or at least the idea of the ideal of service design and the kind of arguments that it tends to generate in the community that are not really discussed and assumed to be i mean true in that sense which is something that we we see like everywhere like it's not specific to service design and i got sick of other type of I mean, other types of arguments and ideas about, yeah, some concepts within design. Um, and, and I don't know, I feel like <laughs> there is an assumption that, um, I'm sorry, just shutting off my... Yeah, notifications. Sorry for that. Yeah, there's an assumption that service design is doing something greater than product design or UX design. In the sense that, yes, of course, they are working on services and services tend to be like broader tend to go across products and therefore they are more complex and it is not entirely false but it's not entirely true either and the fact is that um, they, they do something like which I guess no I would say it's important they focus on something interesting that they tend to work on alignments between between what is supposed to be the interaction between the pro the like the company and the customers and so they try to align the company towards the customer which is not like necessarily a bad idea right um but then it does something that is questionable. It makes something, it makes everything explicit. It works on explicit, explicit things. And what I mean by that is they create an artifact, which is the journey of the customer. And they create, uh, based on that journey, they create another artifact. Or maybe sometimes it's both like it's one single artifact but let's say for the sake of the argument that they the first mapped out what is the journey of the customer and then decided to map out what are the processes that allow this uh, journey to exist in the first place which is called the service blueprint uh canvas and stuff like that 
and they create, they make all those things explicit as, and they, they create like a causal relationship between what is happening for the customer and what is happening inside the company, which is not necessarily, again, a bad thing. The issue is not everything in a company is explicit and it's not because you make something intentional that you will necessarily get the results you are aiming for. Um, and yeah, I, I would say this is not because they are making things explicit that they are good. I mean, because they make things explicit and they work, they create explicit things to work on them. Um, they tend to reduce complex. They tend to try to reduce complexity to explicit, explicit things or what can be explicit, what can be made explicit. Right. And yeah, it, it works for, it works for certain things. It works for things that can, that lands in the complicated or that are already in the complicated, but no one really did the job to understand them fully and connect them to other parts of the organization. And for that is, it is good. I, I won't say the, the contrary. Now, it's not different from what product designers do. And as a matter of fact, it's not different from what most design practices are about. And and I don't see the need of making those kind of distinctions because it creates a fake, I would say like it's a fake idea that there are a hierarchy of things and that are things that are more important or more, I don't know, um, Yeah, that, that makes you as a designer working on more important stuff than for other designers. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's the old, I mean, it's old way of thinking about design, about companies, about organizations. And what does it serve as, um, discourse except then it makes yeah it flatter our egos um i'm not saying that every service designer is doing that but it's kind of latent in the discourse or as it is presented and yeah, people tend to believe that if you came from a product design background and you move to service design, you say, oh, I, I, I broaden up my, my practices or my understanding of whatever I do. Um, now I solve more important problems. It's not just products. Well, it is, and it is not, and it is, it has never been otherwise right it was already the case it's just your point of view that changed about what you do and how you do it and i don't think that system thinking is the next level i don't think there's a next level and Yeah, I don't know. It's it convey this idea that yeah, there's a hierarchy, and it is not the case. It's 
a network it's entangled intertwined and sometimes you see some bits of it but you don't fully understand it and once you gain the type of knowledge that allows you to understand it sometimes you realize it was already there just you were not able to see it and it works with many other things in life right so i mean i do feel like service designers <laughs> you are taking that <laughs> like it's not just you okay um yeah maybe it's me and only me <laughs> i don't know but i feel like it's an excuse to or it wrongly position certain type of disciplines or practices as with um, like a higher status or something like that and it's not true it depends highly on context sometimes certain things are important just because it's important regarding the context i mean service designers are not doing service design all the time and that's normal because not everything they are looking at and try to understand are services and services are just well at least as they are defined in service design they are just one type of thing that organizations do it's not all and yeah i feel like we are seeking the wrong the wrong thing we are we are thinking seeking for an all a comp uh, uh, all um yeah like a, a, a practice that could touch about anything that ca that could design about anything and i don't feel it it exists at all it just requires groups of people to have a set of tools and have a high level of autonomy and praxis which is the combination of knowledge and practice to make good decisions in certain situations not to like cover anything at any time all the time like it's not what system thinking is about it's not what we should do either um there's and yeah i, I talk about system thinking uh maybe it, it feels a bit weird for you but like the, there is a weird <laughs> connection between service design and system thinking in the sense that well it's not me that who does that connection but apparently designers themselves in the sense that um well because uh service design is touching upon several touch points and several parts of the organization therefore that means um if only they had something like a systems thinking perspective about the organization they could better design 
for those things. And well, I don't say it's not true, but you see again, there is this assumption that it's a next level. In, and there is also this assumption that some practices are of higher value than others. The, and, and this comes with this idea that because you mapped out the system, then suddenly you become aware and like some magical tool that allows you to change the system because now you see everything. And I can assure you that <laughs> system thinking is not about that. Well, some part of it is, but it's just not understanding the history of system thinking, where it comes from and where it is now. And understanding that system thinking alone is just a part of what we call complexity sciences. It's an important part, but it's not the only one. And the thing that it taught are not the only thing that you can know about complexity and systems. So mapping systems was or are meant to let you create a model of the system. Now, if you do system modeling, it's because you needed to create some prediction in the sense that of probabilities of what could arise from the changing conditions within the system. Okay. Like um, a weather system and how you model it. Um, you need to model it to predict that tomorrow there is a 50% chance that it will rain. It's not that you are you, now you know that it can rain and suddenly it tells you to do something that you could not do before. It brings some visibility uh, in a, like a short amount of time in front of you but that's it. So modeling is something. Now modeling is just recreating what exists. And in that, st in that position, it's just a mere description of things that you try to mimicate in order to run scenarios eventually. So it can make sense in that direction. But it is not prescription. You cannot know if you were to change some things within that system, especially given the fact that human systems, human social systems are not like a weather system there's things that humans can do that um, air molecule cannot and that means that modeling a human system um, won't let you know what you should do to, in order to change a certain condition like a certain situation to another one. You need different tools for that. Mapping is maybe important, but it's important so far as the type of decisions you can make. And so the artifact itself is not really important. It's just what it allows you to do. And something that is important to understand is that making things visible is already changing the system. It's changing how people perceive things, 
how they understand them and how they come to conclusions and it's just not in the minds it's more in their behaviors and that means that it's already a process of change this is where we should we should probably ditch this idea that because you do systems mapping um, it puts you in this, in this kind of goad mode position where suddenly you are totally objective about what is happening in your system and you can design interventions and magic happened and you change you shift the system in the right direction um, it's easier to work on local states than in the whole system and even that sentence in the whole system makes no sense at all because what you have to understand is that mapping the like you set arbitrary boundaries to what you define is the system and your boundaries are the one that the group you work with is able to think of like any interaction that you mapped out in your let's say causal loop diagram because apparently this is the only way to map systems right um is the same like those those relationships those interactions they are the one that you as a group could think of and make sense of and define what type of outcomes they 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 do they have in what type of effects they have on the system's behavior okay all of that to say we come back to something that is what I mean by that sorry <laughs> what I mean by that why I'm talking about systems mapping is that when you know how systems work and when you know what you can do within systems to have an influence about them you want to work on localities because it's less I mean it's it's more efficient to do it it's le it less costly as an as energy input to change something right here than changing everything at the same time right and you can more easily monitor what is happening and you can work on different localities where something that makes sense in some point of the system won't make sense in another point of the system because of networks and how information is distributed within networks um, transposability of information is not equal you cannot just take information there put it here and it suddenly it works you need interpretation for that to happen that means some information will be lost because it's unnecessary there while it was here and then all of that means that funnily enough the more you scale up your understanding the more you have to lower the type of I mean to not narrow but the more close to some kind of locality you need to be in order to make changes which sounds like counterintuitive and this challenges the idea that some practices or some tools or some disciplines are of higher status or higher value 
And I mean, I'm fine if you think of that, of your practice. It's, I mean, it's your problem. But I guess it's conveying the wrong idea. And I would say we need two things right now. We need curiosity, a lot of it. Especially as things are complex, you, you need to, you have, you need to have those, this curiosity to understand and learn. You need humility. You need to be humble, which does not prevent you to make criticisms about others like I'm doing right now because I accept the fact that I might be wrong and I'm more than happy to be, to be proven wrong. It's part of <laughs> probably my curiosity. Um, and yeah, and we need people that are not ha attached to their tools or to their knowledge. Um, but that, that, that have access to them, uh, you know, nonetheless. So you need knowledge, you need curiosity, and this will help you become autonomous in how good you are at sensing your context, at making decision about it, knowing what tools to use, what methods to apply for what type of outcome you want to get in order to advance further in your endeavor, which is to change things because this is what we are trying to do as designers. And this is what, or at least this is what I believe. Um, I will end up with my definition of design. I'm dropping it here and there in the videos, in the discussions. But I would say it is different from other definitions because other definitions tend to take a standpoint from where they are, like product designers will define design through the product as an object. Um, service designers will define design through the services as an object and graphic designers as well, etc., etc. And this is why we don't have a definition of design. We have definitions of design. I don't, I mean, it's not my intention to replace all of them, uh, but it's my intention to have one that works regardless on which standpoint you 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 are and still works so my definition is design is activities or processes that create mediums for interactions that plays as catalysts for changes. We have, we have a context, we want to change it. Whatever the reasons we got for changing it, for now I'm not defining them. We create something. So designers create things. And this thing acts, a, acts as a medium for interactions between people, systems, processes, tools. I don't know. Who cares? Right now, it's not important to define them. And this enables changes. And I would say it seems to work 
whether you regard this medium as a product, as a service, as an organization, as a process, as a visual, as even a piece of art, I would say. I'm not defining intents, I'm not defining the object, I'm not positioning this definition as an ontological thing, or I hope so. Let me know what you think. Like, it's just thoughts <laughs> and out of a specific fr frustration right now. But I would say I have nothing against you, service designers. I love you <laughs> as much as I, I love design and designers in general for their minds. Um, yeah, one last thing maybe is it opens, this definition opens the idea that some people do design even though they are not considering them themselves as such. And it probably links back practices with knowledge in the discipline. I know, maybe I'm wrong on this. Um, again, open for criticisms, thoughts, ideas. Um, anyway, if you are still here, well, thank you very much because I know I talk a lot. <laughs> That's one of my characteristics. Um, yeah. And anyways, thank you for watching and see you next time. Peace.